Hey guys, bit of a different video today. I thought we'd take a look at my first electric guitar. Just know I'll apologize if there's a lot of um, auto focusing throughout this video. I have had a look at this camera and I couldn't seem to find how to turn it off, but I will be trying to get that sorted for future videos. So do please bear with, I'm sorry. So I say first electric because uh, the first guitar I ever owned was an acoustic I can't even remember how I got it. I think my brother might have given it. It might have been my old, my brother's old one, but um, it was this big acoustic guitar with action that was like this. And all I played on it basically was like the bass line to Another One Bites the Dust by Queen and a very basic version of Smoke on the Water by uh, Deep Purple. I just kept picking it up and wanting to play more but I knew that I couldn't do it on this guitar because it was just impossible. The strings were really thick. I have no idea what gauge they were. I knew nothing about guitars at the time, so I had whatever strings were on it and I never changed them. I knew I needed another guitar to be able to progress. So I wanted an electric and it took a long time to convince my father to let me get one. Not asking him to buy me one, I wanted to get it, get it myself if I could, but uh, he wouldn't let me get one because he thought it was gonna be this massive uh, amount of money to go out. I say massive, it's not like I was going for like a three grand P PRS guitar or anything like that, but still uh, for a 12 year old, it was going for spending a hundred pounds is a, a lot of money. And his worry was that it was gonna be a lot of money going into something that would be just a fad. So I was trying to convince him for a long time to let me get one and it just happened to be some uh, an outside influence that actually let him finally go okay fine you can you do it but you have to save the money you have to buy it and all this which i was fine with that's what i wanted to do anyway so it came my 12th birthday i got whatever money i got with my birthday some money that i'd saved up with the pocket money and that i went out and started looking around for what I might be able to get with £100. I happened to find this store that's uh, no longer there anymore, but it was a store called Head, Hands and Feet. I went in there and spoke to the person about it. I can't remember his name, sadly. He basically, his initial thing was, you're not gonna get anything for 100 I think it was supposed to be in like a, a bit of a salesman technique of going, but if you spend a little bit more, then maybe. And he soon realized that I'm a 12 year old in there on my own. I don't have a parent with me to offer more money that this is what I've got on me. So I was just about to walk out and he was like, actually, I can do this for you. And he pulled out this guitar. You can have this and this practice amp for the hundred, sold. Just give it me, it was a Strat type body, black, um, and it was called a Marlin Slammer. Uh, Marlin's the company name and Slammer is the model. Yeah, I was just happy to get a guitar. If you can't tell, I've got it on my lap. You probably can tell, but I'm not wanting to bring it out yet. I want to save something for you guys. Um, I got this Marlin Slammer. My brother then gave me a tab book for Nirvana's In Incesticide album. I didn't master it. I didn't learn absolutely everything that was in there, but I learned a lot that was in there. And that's, it's an album that means a lot to me because it was like the start of my journey. I mean, uh, Nirvana was, or is, has been, will always be one of my favorite, all time favorite bands anyway. I would say it has always been, it hasn't always been. I used to hate them, but that's another story for another time. So I've just played the Incesticide album a lot and played along with it as much as I could. And that started off my journey learning guitar. Uh, as I say, I've been playing since I was 12. I'm soon gonna be 34, so. Holy crap, that's 22 years. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't even dawn on me before recording this. So it's been almost 22 years now since I first started playing guitar. And you'd think I'd be really good, but I was naive or just plain stupid that I decided I didn't want guitar lessons. I wanted to teach myself because I felt that if I went to a guitar teacher, they would show me how they want to play. And I wanted to learn my own style and just be my own musician, if that makes any sense. And so I stuck with that. I mainly stuck with rhythm guitar 
I do a little, a few bits of lead here and there, but I never learned scales. I didn't learn modes. Um, it was probably at least 10 years until I learned the pentatonic scale, but I still didn't actually spend any time in honing my skills as a lead guitarist. I just played what I liked to play and I enjoyed what I was doing, so it didn't really matter to me that much. But I went off to university uh, to do my masters in 2010. Now, whilst I was up there, it was it was a sound production course, and whilst I was there, I seemed to play my guitar less and less, and I got more into uh, the production side of it. But well, at first, it was the production side of it, but then I got uh, really interested in film uh, film sound design, and that led me to game sound design, which is uh, the profession I'm currently working in. Let's say this started to kind of happen from 2010. But 2012, when I finished my masters, that's when it really seemed to be the point where I just stopped. And I don't really know why. Later in 2012, I decided to start doing a YouTube channel for gameplay videos, which is called F4 Games. And it's still up there, all the videos are still there. And I did that for uh, four and a half years before I moved over to this channel and started doing gaming videos here up until April, I think it was, and that's when I, I realized that I was losing interest in creating video game content. I still like video games and I still like the, uh, the work that I do with sound design, but actually making video game content, um, I just kind of realized I wasn't enjoying it anymore. So I wanted to give myself more time to do the stuff I hadn't been doing, like reading, drawing, and music. So I picked up my guitar and uh, I just instantly rediscovered my love for playing and for recording. I haven't done as much of the writing as I'd like to yet, but I have plans for that. Um, I've got a lot of ideas that I want to work on. I've got new ideas that I'd like to work on. But around that, I wanted to get back into recording stuff and I thought it'd be cool to do some covers and do some kind of different from the norm covers, which led to me doing the cover videos that's on this channel. And that's why my first video was an acoustic version of Blood Red Summer by Coed and Cambria. Now, <clears throat> as a side note, I will admit that cover isn't great. I just wanted to uh, push myself to get, uh, get into it and I got really over enthusiastic and I hadn't been practicing much with my vocals um, and I didn't spend any time really uh, refining them. So, it's actually a bit cringy already for me to listen back to that because I know I could do... I know I'm not the best singer in the world and I've got a long way to go. I know I could have done better than that. But anyway, so that's how I got on to doing cover cover songs. And it just happened to be, um, happened to be at my parents and I remembered that I still had one guitar stored at theirs and that was my first ever electric. So I went up into the attic and I got it. Now, it occurred to me then that this guitar had been up there since 2006 when I left to do my undergraduate over in Derby. So this guitar has spent 12 years in an attic through all weather conditions and I expected it to be really bad. There's some things I'm going to point out, but remember that I said that I bought a black Strat uh, style guitar. This is the Marlin Slammer and this is what it looks like. This is my first um, my first ever electric and the reason it looks like this I forgot that it was this bad. <laughs> there was a point I can't remember the year but there was a point where I decided to sell this to a friend uh, for about 50 quid. I thought I would never touch it again and I didn't feel particularly sentimental about it. So I sold it to them and it lasted about two months before I turned around and thought, I want my guitar back. I need it back because um, I realized that it meant it does mean a lot to me. So even if I would never play it again, I wanted to be the person owning it. It's my first ever electric guitar and uh, music is such a big part of my life. Even during that period I mentioned that I wasn't playing guitar and all this. Music was still uh, a big part of my life. So I wanted it back. 
and he'd been about two months. So I asked him and uh, he said, yeah, it's fine. I could have it back. So this is how he presented it to me. What he did, as soon as he got it off me, was uh, he took it apart, took it to a friend who worked at a local factory and sanded off all the lacquer. And then they, he decided to paint some stuff on it. Obviously that's Blink-182 and you got Starvin' Marvin. He took clippings from magazines and glued it to it and put stickers. This is actually lifting. And then he varnished over it. He also took the uh, original <coughs> screws out of the scratch plate and replaced most of them, but not all of them, some of them are missing, with these larger ones, and I've no idea why. He lost one of the tone pots. Uh, I can't remember if this was him or me, but I think it was him. He moved the strap button from there to up here. Oh, and he, uh, uh, this, might, this might have been me, but the, um, the back plate's gone. And apparently he also varnished this whilst the neck was on and the pick guard was on because you can see the varnish is across here. That was me. I'll admit to this, I took out the top fret and I don't know why, but I did. I was, I was, I will admit I was very destructive to this guitar. It's got like a hole in um, this dot here. The marlin there has a hole for an eye. I did the crucifix there because I thought it was cool for some reason. I used to stab the body. I used to, when I was, wasn't playing it, I'd sit there and just stab a knife into it every now and again. I think it was because I wanted it to look used. You'd see these pictures of these guys back in the day or even at modern times where they'd have these well-worn guitars. Now you get you can get them uh, guitars relicked. Um, and I think I wanted that, but because I didn't, I wasn't going out and playing constantly and it wasn't getting road worn or anything, nothing was happening to it. So I decided to take a bent knife to it. But there you go, there's a hole here a bit of a hole because um, my dad accidentally drilled into it. And I say accidentally, the reason being is because I this isn't the uh, bar that came with it. The original Wami bar I had, as some, some of you guys will know, with these uh, ones that screw in, you'll get it to stop. And you might get it to stop in the perfect place that you want it, but then you want to move it. And um, so I kept moving it around and around I tightened it up to make sure it was always in the same place. What I didn't realize was that I was bending the metal or twisting the metal. So one day it tried and uh, the uh, threaded part of the bar was stuck inside. So my dad had to drill it out and re-thread it. But yeah, this is my first electric. I would love to get this back looking the way it's meant to. But um, one of the things I was expecting to be messed up and is kind of messed up is um, the neck. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there's that gap, which then, it's smaller there, because the curvature of this neck is a bit ridiculous, but it should be fixable. My thought is to get this set up so the neck will be proper, hopefully, or as good as I can get it, and then actually plug it in and listen to it, because I don't even know if this works. To be honest, it's been in the attic for 12 years, so it might not. And also, I don't even know if I plugged it in after I got it back looking like this. I can't remember. I thought I'd set it up uh, the way I record my guitars for these covers at the moment. I don't currently own an amp, so what I do is I DI in and I use uh, Mercurial's Reaxis for some of the guitars, and for others I use, I use a mix of that along with uh, Jam jar. I use a jam jar. Jam jar amp. I love this little thing. Basically, I use this for. Um, I do a center guitar track with this, and I've been using it for the lead parts as well uh, because I love the way this sounds with the neck pickup on my telly. Brilliant. I, I'm in love with it, and I need to get more of these. That's what I thought we'd do. So I'm going to go off and do that. Uh, but for you, you can see what it turns out like now and we're here you can probably tell by my clothes maybe the lighting and my position because i've probably not been able to cue that up properly but we're on a different day um, i set up this as good as i could the neck 
is actually properly bowed. I couldn't get it sorted just by using the truss rod. I've done it as best I could because what it really needs to do to be fixed is to be taken off and dealt with completely separately. I'm not planning on doing that at the moment. I, that might be something I'll do in the future, but we'll see. For now, I just wanted to be able to plug it in, and I have. This is us trying this DI. So we're just going for the bridge pickup DI straight into my um, Roland Quad Capture audio interface. And let's see if we can get this out. I've got this on because I didn't want to put it, have it come through my speakers and mess up with the mic and all, mic recording audio and all that stuff. So this is so I can hear it as well. Let's see. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to actually play. Probably do have been a bit louder. Be a bit louder. Oh. I think I've got a dirty pot. Let's not mess with that. So... It's a... Um, you can hear the buzzing from the bone because it's hitting the first fret, sadly. Considering, I'm actually impressed that this actually works. There we go. I'm still not a good lead player, uh, sadly. I'm, it's something that I'm now working on. Uh, I think I already covered this, though. I, I never really push myself into lead playing that much. It's something that I'm trying to work on now, and I'm trying to practice more with scales and modes. As it is something that I love, I'm gonna try putting it through my jam jar, just for a mess around and see what it sounds like with a distorted signal. Obviously, this is gonna give a certain type I'm just also I'm also using the pit one of the picks that were in the pit guard. It's a cut up fender heavy I don't know what it was. It used to be like a triangle. Like my um my gravity picks that I, I use. I absolutely love this gravity edge two mil pick. But it was like that and at the time I didn't like it, so I cut it down using nail clippers. Anyway, that's a side note. I'm gonna run it through this and see what it sounds like. The jam jar. Alright, for those who don't know, with the jam jar, the level of distortion is all dependent upon the volume at which you have your guitar going into it. So if you have it lower, it'll be more clean, and then as you build it up, it clips. So I've got this as loud as this will manage without me cutting off the pot, because obviously it's a dirty pot. Yes. What's that? That's the coils in the back. That's the coils hold for the bridge are resonating and being picked up. So. Oh wow! That was unexpected. I've stuffed some <laughs> I've stuffed some tissue in the back just to stop it resonating. <laughs> yeah. Too bad, actually. I mean, it's not great. It's not the most amazing sound, but it's a different sound. One of the problems I've had with um, that I had with this when I used to play it, and I've just remembered it now, is hitting the volume pot when playing, and obviously that's a bit of an issue right now because it cuts out. <laughs>
One of the things I should note is these are the same strings. I didn't change the strings, so these strings are 12 plus years old. <laughs> impressed with how this sounds the tissues falling out I'm impressed with how this sounds just for the simple fact that it's so old <laughs> it's bit well it's more the fact that the conditions it's been left in for the past 12 years I was honestly expecting it not to work at all obviously the neck is completely screwed like I say it doesn't sound amazing that's not helped by the old strings that's on it the electronics need cleaning up and the pickups were very basic sounding anyway. Given the right circumstances, I might actually reuse this to get, I don't know, intentionally crappy but good sound. I don't know if that makes any sense. I know what I mean in my head, but um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm impressed that it works. Also gives you a bit of a demo of what you can hear the uh, jam jar doing again it is going off of cheap old pickups with really horrible old strings but i personally love the sound of the jam jar but that's not what this video is about this video is about this and telling you a bit of a story about my journey as a guitarist i don't know how much you guys may, may have found it interesting but uh hopefully you did and I really appreciate it if you've managed to last this long through the video. Do let me know of your guys' stories of your first guitars, like how you obtained them, how you found you progressed with them. Let me know if you'd like to see me demo any of my other gear, um, the stuff that you actually see in the video. So there's my Les Paul copy, there's my Fender Mexican Telecaster, and I've got my Tanglewood Warrior 2. Let me know if you have any other questions, if there's any other things that you'd like to see me uh, discuss or tell you guys about, then do let me know. It's all very much appreciated and I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you very much for coming and hanging out for this. I have no idea how long this video is, but it's probably a lot longer than it should be. Uh, thank you very much and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.